Hello. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for coming to the stream tonight. Uh, good to be streaming on a Monday again. I know I've been a little bit busy the past couple of weeks, but yeah, back to my old schedule, a little bit more chill. Um, and apologies if I sound a little congested or, you know, start coughing a little bit during the stream. I woke up with a weird sore throat this morning, so I've got plenty of tea. I've been drinking inadvisable amounts of tea and <laughs> let me sip in on that throughout the stream. This is going to be a pretty, I mean, relatively chill one. You know, we've been doing some more relaxed streams lately, but. Uh, got some mango black tea. I really love it. Um, tonight, I'm playing a duo of games, Milk Inside a Bag of Milk, Inside a Bag of Milk, and the sequel, Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, Outside a Bag of Milk, which are a pair of games that I've been meaning to play for quite a while. I've been really excited about them, and I'm going in totally blind, so I'm not sure what to expect. These are both kind of darker themed visual novels, and yeah, we'll explore them together. It'll be really fun. So let me, uh, here, let me see if I can miss the, there. Okay. Awesome. I've got my hot tea. I've got my clicker all set up. I hope I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm not muted. I haven't just been talking myself. So cool. Let's jump in. I Nikita Calf Publishing. Great sound design already. Help me buy milk. Okay. Let's see. Well, we know my name. I walk down the road to the store and rehearse my speech. It's been so long since I've been out of the house that I completely forgot what words to say when entering a store. Okay, this is already really relatable for me. I'm going to the store. Who are you talking to? I'm imagining as if I were a character in a game. What if it helps me gather my thoughts? What game? Yeah, what game are you playing? Well, you know. There are games where you can see the character's thoughts. Right on the screen, you know? Yeah, like this one. So I thought, if someone is reading my mind, I need to be very focused so I don't blurt out too much. Haha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take a deep breath of air. Hello, can I... Crap, I forgot. <laughs> again, this is way too relatable already. 19th attempt, and I'm failing again. I bite my lip in frustration. So, once again... Hello, can I get... Uh... Wow, that's a whole word more. Yeah, it is progress! Don't beat yourself up. Thank you, I'm trying my best. I think this time the L sound was longer than usual. L do you think that's it? Who knows? Hello. Hello. Can I? Ugh, I wish I hadn't said anything. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> oh, this is Anxiety Simulator 3000, right down to the being really cruel to yourself. <laughs> okay. By the way, you've been walking with your left foot on the pavement and your right foot in the grass for a full minute now. Sometimes it's nice. What? My right foot is frozen in the air. How much? 50 steps on the pavement and 51 in the grass. You have to undo the previous step. Hehehe. <laughs> How do you imagine that? It's not the first time this has happened. You've been taught the right way, haven't you? Come on. I... I don't remember. I'm ready to burst into tears. Oh. Ugh, here we go again. So, step one. Take a step back to get your foot exactly in your own footprint. Hmm. Wait a minute. What do you mean step one? <laughs> Technically, this is step 51. Or if you count both feet. Would this be step 101? What then? But... Yeah, it's already the 52nd. Or wait, I'm going backwards, so then it's the 50th. It doesn't add up. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Step 50, take a step back to get your foot exactly back in your own footprint. Could you rephrase it just a little bit? <laughs> Arguing semantics with yourself. You can't just repeat a phrase without changing at least one word. People don't talk like that. You're hopeless. You make it sound like it's my fault. Store closes in an hour, so... You'll be very, very guilty if you don't buy milk, yeah. <laughs> you gotta be able to do things for yourself. Sometimes you just need that push. Damn, really? Well, are you ready? Hell yes. I carefully move my foot backward, looking carefully into the dense grass. As I enter the store, I turn to the first person I see. Hello, can I... Friend. Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? No. Excuse me. You shouldn't have done that. He's obviously not going to change his lines. You run the risk of ending up in an endless loop. Excuse me, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. <laughs> the smallest. Oh. What? Oh. What is he trying to tell you? He's trying to scare me, but how does he know that I'm terrified by the letter O? <laughs> Strange phobias. What's so scary about it? I have a frightening image when I picture it in my head. I can show you. Explaining won't be enough. But keep in mind that it'll cost me a duck to- Oh. Oh. Something like that. So, I'll just continue to ignore his question. What? What? Oh. What? Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> I gather all my will into a fist. <laughs> Hi, Joe. I'm glad you came in at that exact moment. It's it's an abstract goatsy, but it's a goatsy all the same. Oh. Oh. <laughs> my interlocutor shook and crawled away. <laughs> You just repeated after him. And it worked! Do it more often! Yeah. Wait, I said he crawled away. Did he really crawl away? I mean, I didn't even look in his direction. You should have watched him crawl. I think it would have been adorable. When exactly did you say that? Just now. Personally, I didn't hear it. You just trying to distract me. But I know that my words were shown on the screen. <laughs> standing by the shelves. On the rack, there are bags of milk. So, I gotta say, I think anxiety would be a lot more entertaining if everything was presented in this format. I, if I could just imagine myself in a pixelated RPG like this, I'd have a lot more fun. We both stand, and the milk lies? Or maybe <laughs> the little-known counterpart to command voice hallucinations is passive-aggressive voice hallucinations. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd say I'm pretty familiar with that one. <laughs> hey, hey, slow down. Do you even remember why you're here? To buy milk. So buy it. Right here? In the store? You're gonna tell me to buy milk in the milk aisle at the milk store? What do you expect me to say? Um, I guess something like, not here. <laughs> not here. Take the bag and go to the cash register. Okay. I guess the first sentence. And you, as if out of spite, didn't pause for the second one. You want to rob me of my little victories? I sigh and reach out to take the milk. Or rather, the bag with the milk inside. Title drop. Rather, a bag of milk inside a bag. Of milk? A bag of milk inside a bag of milk. Hell yeah! Or rather, a bag of milk inside of a bag of milk inside a bag. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside... Come on, come on. 
<laughs> 15 minutes before the store closes, hurry up. Yeah, the only thing that is not going to help your anxiety here is having to deal with the wrath of store workers who just want to go home. I remembered what these games are called, visual novels. By the way, the numbers are written there in full with letters. Are visual novels worse than books? But there the authors are not lazy, so don't get lazy either. Wait, I thought only your thoughts were visible on the screen. Not anymore. So watch your mouth, hee <laughs> hee. <clears throat> anyway, you heard me. Hurry up, or you'll get it at home again. Oh no, somebody's waiting on you to buy the milk. I'm on my way. Hello, can I get some milk, please? <gasps> Another friend. Is it a... Oh, you have it. Ah. Uh, give. I put a weighty bag on the register. Of course, not just the bag, but the milk, too. <laughs> Accurate simulation of what it sound, feels like shopping while stoned out of your gourd. I don't know. I think it's not disturbing enough to simulate that. Hi, can I, can I have it, please? No. I'm going to a different checkout. Please, this is why self-checkout was invented. No. But please, mom will throw me out of the window if I get back without milk. I hope not. I hope not for real. No. But why not? Give more. But I don't have anything else. This is what the impulse bin was made for. You just buy some gum. Okay. What? Pay for the milk. <laughs> really? What would I do without you? I take a crumpled bill out of my pocket and hand it to the cashier. He starts to carefully examine it. <laughs> He's gonna get the little marker out. It took about two days before he nodded contentedly and put it in the cash register. <laughs> the UV light. Yeah. <laughs> Holding it up to the light. Thank you. Goodbye. I walk down a familiar street past a gas station. He can get some snacks. A bag of milk unpleasantly tugs at my hand, reminding me of the days when I was in physical therapy. Oof. By the way, they gave me a bag at the checkout, so I'm carrying a bag of milk in another bag. Don't think anything of it. I just love the pyramidal structure of verbal pyramidal structure of verbal constructions. Yeah. The gas station is getting closer. I hope it's moving towards us. How are you feeling? Thank you for your interest. I feel like a mile-long bar of ice cream. What is that supposed to mean? As if I'd tell you. But I'm really interested. Well, look, the ratio of water to milk and the volume of air occupied by me is about 30 to 1. And yeah, ice cream is not the best, unless you want to drink more than to eat. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's not talk about that. The road from the store to the gas station is a stick, and the road from the gas station to home is ice cream. During today's walk, my body has been to every part of this path. Simple math. I see. I feel movement under my feet. Asphalt grains, petrol stains. I'm trying to keep my balance. And how do people move over something as uneven as the city plain? Gently, heel toe, I count in my mind every meter of the path I walk. I even close my eyes for more concentration. Hey, watch out! Oh. I unconsciously take a star sharp step to the side. At the same moment, a huge bear rushes past me with a wild screech. <laughs> hey, I'm walking in! I cast a rep repro reproachful glance, gl glance at the swiftly departing giant. Okay, so was it like a bear? Like a quadrupedal forest creature? Or a bear like a large burly man? It's red eyes in turn look at me with mockery. Again, is this a large burly man? Or an animal? Did you see that? How brazen. It was a truck. Oh, really? A man built like a truck? <laughs> Although, if you think about it, are there bears with eyes on the back of their heads? We don't know. You could have died. Come on, are you saying someone would seriously want to kill an innocent girl carrying a bag of milk? The world is a cruel and dangerous place. I'm not in the world you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think you are a protagonist. My journey continues. If you think about it, the road from the store is one interesting property. It adjusts to me in the most bizarre ways. 
When I'm in a hurry, all the traffic lights turn off helpfully. When I feel like crying, a cloud appears over me and pours rain streams that hide my tears. Right now I can feel a cloud slowly gathering over the top of my head. I'm sad. Are you sure this is really happening? What else could it be? Has it ever occurred to you that it's all just in your head? It's not what the manual said at all. Apparently, these pills don't work for me either. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. The pills have nothing to do with it. Please, I just want to go home and go to bed. I really, really am very grateful to you, but please, no more. You have to accept the truth. No! You have to accept the truth. No! No! Oof. Looks like Mori doesn't help me at all. I guess I'll try something else next time. Oh. Alright. At least we get... Yes, again. I hope we can do it this time. I walk down the road to the store and rehearse my speech. It's been so long since I've been out of the house that I completely forgot what words to say when entering a store. Let's see. I don't want to be mean, but let's see what happens when we're mean. Aren't you supposed to help me? I take a deep breath of air. Hello, can I... Crap, I forgot. 19th attempt, and I'm failing again. This is actually the 20th. If we're being pedantic again. I bite my lip in frustration. So, once again, hello, can I get... Wow, that's a whole word more. Thank you. I'm trying my best. I think this time the L sound was longer than usual. Do you think that's it? Who knows? Hello, can I... Ugh, I wish I hadn't said anything. Hmm. Don't insult me, please. Let's cruise through this one. I'm wondering whether... Oh. oh. Okay. It seems like... It looks like... Mori doesn't help me at all. Guess I'll try something else next time. Okay. So, that's interesting. I think that... Uh, hmm. I think we just have to try and snap ourselves out of these little spirals when they happen. Are we going to play the silent game? Okay. Yeah, maybe not interacting with the protagonist when they're in these spirals will help. We gotta make it home from the store. We gotta get home from the store with our bag of milk inside a bag. Don't worry. Don't worry, by the way, I'm going to point out a specific flaw that <laughs> in a mistake that you've been making, so you can obsess over that instead. Hmm. So, step one, take a step back to get your foot back exactly in your own footprint. I mean, it's a simple coping mechanism, I guess. It's probably better than nothing. You'll be very, very guilty if you don't buy milk. Are you ready? Hell yes. You're doing it. Oh. There he is. I like the elephant shrew nose, the proboscis. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. You run the risk of ending up in an endless loop. Excuse me, what? Okay. <laughs> what is he trying to tell you?
exactly like that. Just, you know, the, <laughs> the unending cosmic horror of space. Gather all my will into a fist is such a good line. Oh. Checkmate. <laughs> okay. You repeated after him at work, so do it more often. here to buy milk, so buy it. Take the bag and go to the cash register. <laughs> you want to rob me of my little victories? <laughs> anyway, you heard me. Hurry up or you won't you'll get it at home again. I think this guy's body is just a little wiggly. It's almost like Bell Sprout from Pokemon. <laughs> From the perspective of this cashier, they're just like, I want to clock out. I just need to get out of here. I'm tired of talking to people. I'm tired of these people. The tangle of their lives. Pay for the milk. What would I do without you? Thank you. Goodbye. I wonder how much... How much did the milk cost? You just gave them one bill? Was it... One dollar or five dollars? How are you feeling? It's good to check in with yourself. Mm. Watch out for the bear. Okay. Moment of truth. The crosswalk. The crossing. The crossroads. I can feel a cloud slowly gathering over the top of my head. I'm sad. Are you sure this is really happening? What else could it be? You know what? What? Since I'm a character in a visual novel, I want to talk to whoever's reading this right now. If you say so. I forcefully squeeze my head with my hands and place a thought block. I wish I could do that. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bench, the perfect place for cliched and visual novel monologues. I hope there's a street light above it just illuminating the character perfectly. Yeah, finally the protag has a superpower. I move closer, place a noticeably weighted bat of milk next to it, and raise my head to the sky. Hmm. Listen. I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> I realize that I'm going crazy. The medications are becoming less and less effective, so... Ultimately, things will happen painlessly, I hope. Oh... Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, I'm guessing what you're talking about, and that's awful. But, I'm sorry. Oop. Okay. Clicking... I'm clicking. Are we okay here? Let me... Hmm. Uh... Okay. We're saving. Oh, I'm a dumbass. I'm sorry. I 
do you know what you're talking about? Really? Unfortunately, yes. It must be nothing like the model protagonist at all, huh? To be honest, I haven't read many visual novels. Sometimes I regret it, because now it costs me a lot of effort just to distinguish between letters and words. By the way, if you don't mind, I'd rather not name my diagnoses. That is totally fine. Let at least you be the one who sees me for who I am. Even though I made you up, don't take that away from me, okay? Don't ask me for too much. How stupid does this all seem, no? It's not stupid. In the very beginning, you've been following me, reading my delusional thoughts, hearing my silly conversations. I must seem crazy and weird to you. No, really not. <laughs> hmm. What is it like to see the world through my eyes? Ever since <clears throat> something happened, all I see is red. Red blood everywhere. I know, I've been wondering what this thing in the center is. No, don't worry about me. I got used to it a long time ago. Admittedly, I've even forgotten what other colors look like. Come on. Those monsters from the store, they didn't scare me at all. After all, I know they won't hurt me. Sometimes I think that they themselves are afraid of me. Can you imagine that? By the way, if you want to ask me what happened, please don't. Promise? Of course. Really? Yeah. Yes. Really? Of course. I'm serious. Of course, you couldn't help but ask. In the end, I'm just talking to myself. Sooner or later, I would have brought it up. So you're really that interested in what happened to me? I mean, yeah. I won't waste time. What do you see? It's like a Rorschach test. <laughs> Anyway, this is my dad. Oh, some of his parts, at least. We do have a, ver a very difficult family. But despite all the problems, I never would have thought. Sorry, I shouldn't have raised my voice. Anyway, he jumped out the window and died. Oh. This is my last memory. Then, a long gap. Poor thing. Oh gosh, okay. Strange, very strange. Today's the first time I've ever been able to buy something in a store without a major incident. Well, good! That's huge progress. Of course, the medicine helped me, however... I think it's more your merit. I kept thinking, we mustn't screw up in front of the reader, or, oh my god, what will he think? Haha. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to become a visual novel character for the sake of going to the store today, but it clearly paid off. Thank you. By the way, it seems to me that there are some boundaries in our communication. That's how I like it. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> and yet, I've been so sad lately. I've been thinking more and more about what my life has become ever since my dad... Well, you know. Day after day, it's the same thing. I've tried so many medications that I hardly feel any difference between them anymore. As long as they help keep me on my feet, I'm happy. But you know what? Today's a special day because I have you. There's so much I want to tell you. You can't even imagine... That was very rude of you. Oh no. I'm not going to pressure you, I'm just advising you to go home. I understand. Well, dear reader, shall we go? Yeah. Ugh. It's another- oh. When I get to my floor, I hang over the railing. Repeating this action every day like a ritual, I stopped being afraid of heights altogether. A few minutes ago, the effects of the medicine finally wore off, so I just enjoy the blissful silence. When I'm under the influence of drugs, terrible and unpleasant melodies sound in my head. Mixing with the sounds of the word world around me, they create a terrible dissonance in my head. I turn around and go to my apartment.
Oh. Shoot. Did you bring the milk? Your mom hasn't aged a day. Her skin is so smooth. Hi, Mom. Did you bring the milk? Yes, Mom. Did your new medicine help? Yes, Mom. Go to bed. Mm. Yes, Mom. Oof. Okay. Protagonist interrupted her in the middle of her no practice. Yeah. Mom mom is just has a great affinity for, you know, Japanese interpretive dance <laughs> and performance. Oh. Well, that was heavier than I expected, but I'm glad we brought some comfort to the protagonist at least. I mean, gosh. Yeah. I've I'm lucky I haven't been through as much of that kind of struggle with medication and getting treatment, but you know, there's, there's a lot there that's relatable. I mean, super evocative story. So let's get started with Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, which is the sequel. This one's a little bit longer, and I'm assuming it's going to explore a little bit more of the story that we just got in the first part. But let's go. Wow. This is awesome. Oh, she's counting the steps. Is she walking on the grass? Mm. Man, it's like reading the book versus watching the movie, you know? Or the, the screen ad adaptation. This is amazing. You're doing it, you're gonna get the milk. Wait, it's not in a bag. Something's wrong. Hello, can I? take much time. What do you see? Are you sure? Mm. I wonder which one's ours. Me bringing my report cards home. Okay, let's see. Milk outside, a bag of milk outside, a bag of milk. Let's get going. Also, if my mouth is waking out on my rig, it's because I'm drinking tea and VTube Studio doesn't know how to handle that. Oh. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. Okay, so it's picking up right where we left off. Mm. 
I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. <laughs> That's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that... I really love this style. I break into a run and dash towards the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now, don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. There's somebody inside. I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 I don't want that. What do I do? So chat, if you scare me enough, maybe I'll come back to life and you won't be able to see my bones anymore. Just keep that one in mind. I couldn't fully complete my thought when the, my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. Hmm. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside. But there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? The bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. Yeah, you inv you introduced the milk into a predator ha habitat. <laughs> poor milk. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. Your mom again. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. Mom, you need to work on your greetings. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. Mom is just a fan of finished death metal. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everybody's got a weird mom. The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all the pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. Mm. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. Sinews? But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time. But why, why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from the pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me. Kill me! Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop felt in my memory so I can gather them all later. I need to remember. I need... A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Waste not, want not. <laughs> Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I... Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. Yeah, you know you're lactose intolerant, honey. This is exactly what lactose intolerance is like. You know, you just start having the spider dream again. We're cute. 
I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Okay, this is like the biggest mood. <laughs> I... uh, this is how I feel every time I come back to my apartment. I'm screen capping this. Okay, we're good. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality of the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. That's depression, babe. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. And now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. I'm not yet convinced that this isn't an elaborate AI designed to imprint and mirror the player. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty spot on, honestly. Like, this was me about a decade ago. God. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. I don't like this foreshadowing, but it is really that weird transition when you can feel your meds wear off. I mean, it's yeah, pretty accurately represented, in my opinion. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it. I'd do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. A sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy. Filthy. The pill flies straight to the waistband, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same br blood red color. There's some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. Mm -mm. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides, and I find a reason not to swallow it. Oh, yeah, if you're taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of pills, I mean, God, it's, it's one of those chain things where, you know, the doctor puts you on one thing and then you get another thing to counteract the reaction to the first thing, but then you have a bad reaction to the second thing. It's just the cycle. I, I don't blame people for wanting to get out of it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right now. Wait. This is the... <laughs> Everything is a placebo method. I don't know. But that's my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder, who's going to be my conversation partner? Mm. Too many cooks spoil the soup that is your literal brain. Yeah. I've got a pretty funky soup going on myself. Hey. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Hey, long time no see. Hmm. You know we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Well, we're having the opposite of that, I think. Basically, nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. He didn't reply. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? 
I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now. All right. I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Okay. I'm hoping it was... I ho I'm hoping they're talking about the medicines that the protagonist made up and not something they took. Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. What I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Hmm? I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. Yeah, I get a feeling I'm going to be doing that pretty soon. Okay. I can imagine how angry you are right now. What made you so happy all of a sudden? Why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple hours ago. I don't know what you mean. Stop lying. Uh, I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. I'm sorry. I don't actually mean this. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see, yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Oh, honey. Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, and we'll decide what to do with you. Mm. It feels like getting outside of their head is a coping mechanism. I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. The me, the me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile and bares her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind. Two squared by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. Good! Math? <laughs> the monotony of math can be really helpful in calming down. <laughs> my head is splitting apart now. Yeah, math does that too. Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. Fine, you can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I... Don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Yeah. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? What do you think? I can't be sure about anything, and you don't take me seriously anyway. Then why'd you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it triple in force. It hurts so bad. Choices, choices. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf of my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up from my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. Nice. Sweet. Sick moves. Mm. How you doing?
I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. Yeah, Joe, this is literally... I... Whoever made this game, ha like, funneled a wire directly through my ear, like, a decade ago, at least, and just <laughs> somehow manifested all of it into this game. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. Hmm. I gotta say, lying on the floor is one of the best things ever when you're not feeling good. Do you want to talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. What do you want, then? I just want to lie down for a bit. Yeah, that's good. If there's a better coping mechanism than just lying down, then I haven't found it yet. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? Sorry. I need to get my thoughts in order. carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my cork board. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. I have cockroach thoughts most of the time. <laughs> no, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? Yeah. I don't mind either way. Nice. Yeah. And they come with cool, like, ambient music, too. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts, the fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just, that moment doesn't come. Yeah. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? I mean, we're by ourselves in our room. And our mom is kind of like a scary hell beast, so does she even notice? A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone, if you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better, believe me. And now, start over. Ooh. Is it gonna send me back to the beginning? <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Oh. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Sorry. Forget about them and go to bed. No, you don't get it. If I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts or else... I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please, tell me you'll help me. <laughs> my only friends are the voices in my head to the cringe edgelord forum signature circa 2005. Look, you're allowed to be 14 years old, okay? You're allowed to be 14 and having big feelings. Or, you know, living through an extremely traumatic event 
and dealing with medication side effects. You just gotta get through it somehow. You can be cringe. You can be as cringe as you need to be if it helps, okay? Don't kill the part of you that's cringe. Kill the part that's, that cringes. I love being cringe personally. <laughs> Come on, stop bullying me. He promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. That's the thing, I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... Oh... Mm. I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so itchy. Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Mm. Did you drink milk? I wonder, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, will my eyes stop itching? It'll make it worse. I wonder, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, all my eyelashes, one after another, I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another. What have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then, then I need to have a bath, and then... Here, drink some milk. No! Okay. I stand in the middle of my the room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Okay, I'm sorry, but... Yeah, that's what lactose intolerance. <laughs> sorry, babe. Well, that was surely something. Yeah, it was. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. My thoughts are hiding from me. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. Existential digestive crisis. You know, when you're sitting there, it's midnight, and you're dealing with the aftermath of a full ice cream sundae, just questioning everything, reliving the worst moments of your life. Yeah. There are a lot of places for bugs to hide in a depression den. No, 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 and no. If I make even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. Already a mess, babe. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? Who, me? No, of course not. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you. Rude. As somebody who's transparent, I resent that statement. All right then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch? Yeah. You know. Just, when you're feeling anxious and overwhelmed, the best thing you can do for your own mental health is to just set yourself an impossible task that makes you really stressed out. My oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. Oh yeah. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. What about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. It's so childish. You want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Come on, don't be so boring. Yeah. We should play along. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. It is! You can. There are people who you can ask for help. Or at least I hope there are. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. 
I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Oh, yeah. Oh, to be a tiny firefly inside a giant sweater. Wowee! <laughs> Wowee! Are we gonna- are we gonna set- are we gonna set her off? Are we gonna- Let's just say wowee! Wowee! We're being supportive! Yeah! Nice. Ignore the black vortex emerging from behind the firefly. I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. New friend. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. Ah! <laughs> it tickles! Okay. As long as it tickles. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Okay, we're good. We're doing good. Uh. All right. Nice. Time to start the pointing and the clicking. I, I would definitely hide in a plant if I was a little bug. Right, insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Mm, yeah, I guess. I don't think fireflies do that, but... I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves smell of dust and cardboard and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? Yeah, don't, don't, don't push. Don't push. Let's, uh, these. Maybe lights. Are you serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a firefly. I would like to be, but... Well, only if they purposefully want to lower their self-esteem. <laughs> Flying too close to the sun. Okay, uh, behind the grate? It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> uh, we've entered the stage of depression where you methodically index everything you ought to do so that you can procrastinate on it. Uh, I was I was a little bit concerned that this would be the stage of depression where you start cataloging everything you own so you can start making a will. But let's not talk about that anymore. Um cabinet? I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling, at least 300 feet off the floor. About. About 300 feet. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like, totally. I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, we're not actually going to ignore you. No, you don't. Act normal. Stop. Don't say that. Mm. Oh. Oh, you sleep in a sleeping bag? Baby. Oh. Let's see. Alarm clock. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its, its unstoppable flow. Mmm, it's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at its hands for too long. <laughs> First, I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction, and then they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. What time is it, Will? The draw a clock protagonist. <laughs> they pleaded for help, I think? What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? No. Let's continue searching, then. 
Mm. Hell yeah. It's 3 a.m. and we're listening to the experimental noise channel on the college radio. I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. How do you manage to have mental illness and not go on the internet? This protagonist is so strong. A bizarre item. I fear it. Yeah, I fear, fear, fear any kind of internet connected device these days. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Ah, please. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. Oh. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering, calculator, 3D modeling. You're so talented! These are good talents. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did, before entering the web. Yeah, that's where it all goes bad. Imagine this, you're a hamster that lives underground. I would love to be a hamster underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Could you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagine. Alright, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives... Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Mm. Yeah. You'll end up returning to that subject anyway. On one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house and brings you to the pet store. Now your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours, and the other hamsters look identical to you, too. That means you are all the same. Apart from the fact that they were born at that shop. You'll ask, what does that indicate? And I'll tell you, nothing at all. I forgot what I was talking about. Gosh. Okay, let's start over. This time, try to avoid stupid- It's not a stupid hamster analogy. I like this analogy. You know I'm not at fault here. So. I had a lot of friends online. Tens, hundreds of them. Impossible to count. Is it impossible though? I had exactly 317 of them. Although I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Don't get distracted. Oh right. For my 317 friends, 68 were into gaming, just like me. <gasps> the magic number. 130 of them like drawing, just like me. The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. And when I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Alright? You can split numbers evenly, no problem, but math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. A major conundrum, right? Get to the point. I knew, of course, that no real people exist on the web. I also understood that all of my friends die the moment I turn off my laptop. Yep, this is what happens to a VTuber when you stop watching. We just fade back into the void. That's why I'm a ghost in the first place. But I still wasn't even a little bit worried. Why? Do you know what computer programs consist of? It's just a combination of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend, and I don't care whether they know about my existence or not. I feel that. Anyways, as I was saying, Every pro program has its own algorithm and purpose, its mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, you'll be able to predict the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. You don't need to follow me around, just listen. <laughs> I sit on the floor and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. The only thing reflected in it is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just executable code. Hey. Let me know if you need a break. One day, someone appeared. From that point on, my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was good at pretending. At some moment, I let him trick me. Hey, look. Huh? Suddenly, a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. Well, it's better than a roach. I think it's trying to say something. <gasps> Morse code. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? Yes. I changed my mind. I have absolutely- No! I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. He heard you. He's insulted. 
Then it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. Good. For some time, it thinks about the further course of actions, then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. What about your story? Hmm. You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story. Maybe... Do you promise? I promise. And if you forget? Then remind me, with a code word, for example. What code word? I'll think of one later. Okay. It's a lot of pressure. And for now, let's keep searching for my fireflies. Okay. I'm glad she's feeling a little bit better. Keep poking. I doubt it. All of the compartments are locked. What if... I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Yeah, fair. The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. No wonder. It's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather around my ceiling. It's such a blessing that it can do it without my help. Still, a firefly won't hide in a place like that. It'll catch a cold and be unable to fly. You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. Okay. Oof. Mm. Notes? Your usual notebook pages glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you'd know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Hmm. Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Ooh, don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. Okay, so fireflies are coming out of the things that remind the protagonist of people, it feels like. The notes, internet friends. Hmm. I don't know if we should confront the pills right now. Let's look at more notes. What are those? Ah, uh, those... Those are the photos of my best memories. Aww! But they're... Oh no, but they're blank. I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. So... Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. Mmm... Honey. I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. So we'd better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be there? Because it's warm. Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't disappear just like that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so they occupied this place. Do you understand now? I'll pretend I do. We have two radios. Interesting. We have three radios. Waiting for the bass to drop. It's, it's the latest noisy track. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to confront the garbage. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook cages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. Mm. Okay. Notebook? This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Have you tried drawing? It takes so fucking long. Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. Trust me, you can buy a million sketchbooks for no reason and never use them. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. 
even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Yes, I, I, I know all about riding the bus. Hmm. I'll broach this topic. Maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one? Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another? And how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Now let's not go there, okay? <laughs> I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad. I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. Mm -hmm. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. The distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with headache in my head. I know it's gonna happen. The rustling has stopped, even though the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. Ugh. And you have to reconfront your old artwork. I wait a little longer. The wind will close it. I won't have to look if I wait a little longer. If I wait... Open your eyes. No! It's okay, just do it. No way, I know you're lying. Calm down. No! Calm down. No. Calm down. No! Calm down. No! Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with the utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here. You tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it. I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling gr grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look, look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly. Something good happened. The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into perfect silence, but only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up and in and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. I spent some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Phew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. Okay. I'm glad that ended well. I look down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. Yeah, that's, that's what the bottom of a backpack looks like at the end of the year. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there. And I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. Well, yeah, that's a good outset. That's a good mindset. All right, all right. What did you like the most there? Mm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me, let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft and the food was nice. Mm. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got pulled off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? Hmm. It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. What happened then? I don't remember. Does it even matter? 
Tell me about it again. Is your memory that bad? Please. Oh, fine. That day, Dad picked me up from school earlier, explaining to me that I need to grow up. It's not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Satisfied? Tell me about it again. Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. That scene was ordinary for them. Who knows what that little brat has done. Then he pushed me into the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this further. Oh. No, you'll tell me again. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Mom was not home. Again. I hate mom so much. What happened next? Suddenly, I feel someone's eyes on my back. Knowing that these moments should never ever be ignored, I turn around. But there's nothing there. What happened next? Everything that happened next happened after something that led to everything that happened after what had happened. I look at my bag again. Light pouring in the room through the window glints on the metal parts. There's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It's already happened countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see that a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. It's barely glowing, and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts growing bl glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies toward me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the fly firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. Oh. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Oh. Sure, let's continue searching. Okay. Only a few things left. We can't go out onto the balcony. Ugh. We can't go out onto the balcony. We already looked at that. Did we look at the pills? I look at the mound of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't... What's wrong? I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Things could have been much worse. Yeah. I heave a deep sigh, come closer, and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it, and along with them... A firefly! Hooray! After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. Good! Okay, we're almost there. Um, the fan, and then I'll do the sleeping bag. <laughs> I feel like the umbrella must have a hidden firefly. These trees usually just try and dissuade you from looking more. Yeah, that could be. I'll try clicking it again. And, um, what was the other one? The trash can, I think? What's funny about that? I imagined myself being a firefly that's looking straight at a giant fan. And? I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in, and the cable. It's like an inmate if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. Okay. <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Did we? Huh? I gently slap my cheeks to return myself to my senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now, I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside? Nah, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. What? I said, searching here is meaningless. Mm. Okay.
I, so the umbrella won't highlight again. It doesn't look like I can double search items. I can turn the radio back on, but, uh, can't click that. Okay. Finish searching. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. I guess... Hmm. I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Yes? You deserve to be happy. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. A zero sum. Like your sweater. And happiness is always about being positive, right? No? You can have a baseline. You shouldn't think too much, it hurts you. I want to sleep, yeah. You should. Ah, brain. Okay, how about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? We'll go to the balcony, breathe in some air. I don't think that's gonna... I, I, I have a bad feeling about this. I think outside looks a little ominous right now. Somehow, those words have triggered a panic attack in me. Yeah! I subconsciously step away from the balcony. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. Oof. Let's, yeah. All right, let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk. And yet... And yet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. Mm. The day after tomorrow. Never ever. That's a goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. Oh, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratch my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. Hmm. Yeah, just get some rest. This is a nice looking sleeping bag. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. Yeah. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down, and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. Pale pupils are not that scary, are they? It was scary, you know. Then one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well-deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed there. I guess they liked this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me. I'm always kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course, they're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. I was trying so hard here, don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax, nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. 
Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. <laughs> Sounds silly, but it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we we'll just end up wasting time. No, read her a bedtime story. Do this. Do this nice thing. Let's focus on something actually important. Uh, this, 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 whatever kind of character we're playing that argues with the brute tag, it's like we're the opposite of executive dysfunction. We are the executive function. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. I don't know if it's going to be good for us to focus on this. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, narrow dimly lit alley, an awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? I think this is one of our endings. The previous one. Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. <laughs> the smug look. Oh. He's extra smug. You're late! Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. He takes a very deep breath. You are late! I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluated look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Oh no! Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Uh. Well, aren't you full of yourself? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird, constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know what way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. <laughs> Sorry. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to report. Lead the way. Mm. He's so jaunty. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. Was he doing the same thing we were in the first game? Hmm. After reaching the store's doors, we are greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. <laughs> the store is clearly doing very well if they have that many staff. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah, uh, and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says, We're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. We're at soup! I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently towards one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Oh god, that's me. <laughs> Reading every bit of copy on the back of a box. Hello, can I... I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry towards them. Is he yours? 
customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um, Hypnotresca. If he's yours, please get him away from me. Yes, I'm sorry. I drop. I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and eyes pop. He's also shaking. Have we, has the protagonist become the voice in our head? Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I, I got so scared, he said, what? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning and he's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. Who, me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hang a new sign on the door. Ten minutes. There you are. I made Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey you, move! I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that is formed after Tresca. I squeeze through towards him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. This cashier looks human, at least. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. Oh. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. The w what? <laughs> Bro. You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. <laughs> exactly. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a... Ooh. Our son? How old are they? do they think we are? But... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier of much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees, then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. Yeah, damn straight. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right towards the gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? Or dairy? No. You don't like ice cream? Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know... He turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. No, don't do it! There's bears! I stare at his back, confused. Oh, buddy, don't do it. Uh, don't do it. It seems like you're not helping me at all. God! Fuck. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. Oh... Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, it looks like we were finally able to get out of sight of our own head. Whether or not that's a good thing. Mm. Ghost Funeral is a great name. Hold on just a second. I'm gonna open up Steam. I was getting achievements the whole time, so... I'm wondering whether this was the end of it for sure. Let's see. Okay. Five hidden achievements remaining. Okay. other deaths in here, I think. But... Hmm. 
not exactly a fun game, but, you know, a good one. I did like it quite a bit. What happens if we continue? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's too bad. Um. Mm, sorry. I, you know, I think I might revisit it, it at a later date, but, you know, that was, that was an experience. It was a good, you know, great game. I wouldn't say it was like a fun and positive experience, but uh, it's very accurate, very true to life, very relatable. And I really, I'm glad our protagonist could help, you know, help themselves get a little more perspective and kind of build up some better behaviors or no, not behaviors, but better coping mechanisms. I just, I hope they continue to improve because I mean, this isn't, I'm not trying to make a pun here, but you know, the whole situation seems like such a nightmare and it's possible to get through it. It just really is no fun in the meantime. So mm, let's see. I don't think I'll raid today. I'm sorry. I'm feeling a little bit tired, but <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It's been, I'm glad we get to finally play this game. And, you know, I'll look into whether there are cues or anything, you know, maybe I'll play through again and, you know, just make sure to save frequently so that I can go through and try and unlock more achievements. But yeah, in the meantime, I hope you all have a great night. Thanks again. See you on Wednesday for Digital Exorcist. Yeah, Joe, thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for keeping it light and levity, <laughs> uh, bringing some levity into the chat. Yeah. Digital Exorcist is coming up on Wednesday. That'll be a fun one. Same time as usual. Um, the writing in it is really great. And uh, it's got the same kind of like pixely, glitchy graphics. So that'll be a nice continuation, I think. Keeping a theme for this week. After that, I've got to figure out my schedule for the rest of the month. But yeah, awesome. Thank you again. Take care. Have a good one. See you again soon. Bye.